And hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Darkfall the Journal. As usual, I am Dennis, I am Tan's Tavel the Paleo Gamer, and I am your host this evening. Now, if you last remember in Darkfall, we had left our nameless protagonist after they had finished going through the third floor of the hotel and had solved almost all of the mysteries there, and they were preparing to head on down to the second floor and see what else they could find out about the mysterious disappearances caused by the evil entity, the Darkfall. So let's load that game and get back to exploring the hotel. And here we are down on the first floor, or excuse me, the second floor. So, yes, that's really... So let's start looking around here and see what kind of trouble we can find. We'll start with room A here. And, okay, anytime you see a pair of scissors stuck into a wall, that's probably not a good thing. But, okay whatever. Um, compared to some of the other stuff in the hotel, that's almost prosaic. I mean, all right. The only thing we can do in here is look at this thing here. Um, there's a advertising flyer here for their new dining room of the Station Hotel, which was designed by Arthur Johnson. And we have a picture of what is labeled as Table 2. So let's kind of remember what that picture looks like. Um, there's also a receipt here, which is also from Table 2, in case we just didn't get the um, idea. They had broth, pickle, dumplings, goose, and a tart. Okay, we won't judge. Now, the other kind of odd thing here is there's another book here. It's a copy of the Bible. Now, What's odd about this is if you notice, it looks like there's something stuck in the Bible there. There's a, another pamphlet or a something, but you can't look at it. Won't let me. Whatever. I guess it's not important. That's all we can really do in this room. So let's head across the room or across the hall to room B. That, of course, leads up to the third floor. Now, what we have in here is, this is Matilda Fly's room. See? You're very nosy, aren't you? Poking around in other people's things. Well, you're very dead, too, so... Oh, I guess that was crude of me to say that. Anyway, she talks about, in these letters... Uh, she apparently got a very bad review of her latest play, but she has found something that she thinks is You're going very to... very nosy, aren't you? Poking around in other people's things. It seems that she has found some way to make some money out of this little trip. Now over here we have a clock. What a strange clock. It's got buttons on it. And yes, it does. It has these buttons here. Now, if you notice when I did that, the third button had a little different sound to it. Now, what I have to do is click these buttons that make that different sound in the correct order. Well, it turns out you start with three, then you can just do the first one, the second one, and the last one. Which causes this secret compartment to pop up. Inside the secret compartment, oh look, another one of our little mysterious symbols. Hmm. Wonder what we can do with that. You're very nosy, aren't you? Poking and around in you other see, people's things. See, Crabtree gave it to him and said to hide it. Now, so that's obviously her symbol, and we knew earlier that um, her symbol was named Morcana because we saw that on the invisible ink drawing earlier. So that's obviously the symbol for Morcana. Now here we have her last one of play. my best. Yes, I'm sure it was. Um. Well, not everyone seems to agree with you, Miss Fly, because you see, if you look in here, the scoundrels. 
you see all kinds of things about how horrible the reviews were and how she left the stage in anger and they call it a comedy. Matilda Fly's turn as the wife has members of the audience rolling in fits of laughter. So apparently she's left, apparently because her performance was so bad and came here. Bus falls into East End Sewer. I mean, that's just sort of a strange random thing to have there. And um, the only other thing she has here is, yes, there's a thing about her, but there's also this note about Sly Fox. Remember the female bank robber that we were looking at earlier? That's obviously where she got these things from. There's some books down here. We can't look at any of them. All we can do is do that. So anyway, that's what we have in here. We have her symbol, and we know more kind of goes with it. So let's and there's another thing flying around down there. I'm sure that is completely harmless. All right. Room C. Hmm. That's one of the Dark Falls symbols, isn't it? Now, in this room, all we can do is we can look in this chest here, or this cabinet. And there's this wooden box that has these symbols on it, or this pattern on it. Now, if you remember when we were down in the hotel lobby, there was a blotter on the desk that had some ink blots on it, and we made a rubbing of a piece of paper that gave us the um, numbers. Well, this is where we use that. If you remember, those were blots were numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So if we click these in that order, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, the box opens. There's a couple of things in here. First, there's another symbol. And there is this note that tells us that the symbol is called Lusa, or Lusa. Um, the symbol's been scattered. This could save us. If the means of entrapment are hidden, it is less likely to be able to stop me easily. Arthur hid the other words well beyond the visible exposed by flame. Well, that's the um, hint to solving the invisible ink puzzle we solved last time. But when will remain hidden here within this box? So, Lusa is another symbol. And that's all we really have here. I have to close that before I come back out. Now, one odd thing about this room that I've noticed in a couple of playthroughs is this table right here. Sometimes there is a gray hat sitting on that table. Sometimes there isn't. Um, it's not that it's particularly important. It's just that there's a hat. I turn off the lights, but I can't do anything with the lights off. Notice I can't move. It's one of the very few rooms I can actually turn the lights on and off. Again, I don't know why. All right, room D here is locked. This is actually the room where Nigel and Polly had their um, their ghost hunting equipment set up. But we have their key. Remember, we got that from the um, silver teapot. So let's go in here. There is a lot to do in this room, as I'm sure you can imagine. So let's look at things in this room in a variety of order. Uh, there's a note from your brother, Pete, um, talking about their, ex their um, experiment, or their ghost hunting. Here's a map of Dowerton. There's some pictures here. There's Polly, presumably, and that's presumably Nigel from inside the hotel. Something weird there. And I don't know why Nigel. He's just clowning at them. There's also these um, takeout menus, because apparently they did everything here. Now, all three of these takeout menus have the phone number on them. So, let's just keep in mind that these phone numbers are here. Because, who knows, that may be important. Yeah, they take a lot of takeout, apparently. Now, there's a journal here. I bet that would be interesting if we could read it. 
Main thing here is this tape recorder. I'm leaving this message just in case something terrible is happening in this hotel. Nigel is gone. I don't know where. He was behind me and then... Then, well, he's gone. Read my journal, if you haven't already. We should never have come here. We were not prepared. We discovered something using the thermo scanner. I've written the settings in a safe place. Upstairs, in the bathroom, find them. We have sealed the chamber back up, but it's only temporary. If you find the settings, you may gain access and perhaps find Nigel. Please, God, let him be all right. I cannot connect either online or by phone. I'll have to venture beyond this room. I think it's gone. It was outside the door. Now is the time to make a move. Wish me luck. And yeah, it doesn't seem that that ended well for Polly. She said to read her journal, which we haven't found yet. Too bad we can't read that. That may be what that is. So let's head on over here. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to look over here just to see what we're all we're dealing with. Um, Haddon Industries, it looks like, gave them a computer, some flat screen monitors, mice, keyboards, an ultra fusion battery, and cameras. So obviously Haddon Industries is perfectly happy sponsoring these two college students working on their degree. We also have, back here, hidden in this back corner, a pair of goggles, like night vision goggles. Now, what these goggles will let us do is at various points through the hotel now, whenever we look in a particular direction or go to a particular room, you'll hear a word like this. Yeah. Okay, you heard that here. That means there's something hidden in this room that is made visible by these goggles. In this case, that. The in no can I have no useless pieces, useless pawns with electric gifts. They think they know something thrown away. You can also see that the paintings come and go and things in the room go away. Anyway, um, so we have that. It's a new tool to help us do things. Now over here we have a phone. Also from Haddon Industries. Man, they really wanted to help these guys. Now we can use this phone to call the different takeaway restaurants they had. Now, I'll save a little bit of time here listening to all this. If you call Carolina Chicken, they will basically, someone will stand there going, hello, hello, who are you? Talk to me and then hang up. So, because obviously we're not saying anything. Well, I'll let you listen to it anyway. 01622, I wrote these down from earlier when we looked at those. 048152. And yes, 2002-era cell phone. Hello, Carolina Pizza. Hello. Hello. If you don't speak, I can't take your order. Hello. Hello. Can I get you anything? How about a pizza? Like, this isn't funny. You weirdo, good night. I'm not a weirdo. Who are you? Okay. The um, only reason I actually played that is because it becomes obvious that for some reason we can't talk. For, for some reason we couldn't tell these people what we were trying to do. And it's kind of odd. I mean, wouldn't you think we would say, hey, I'm trying to find out what happened to some people here. Can you tell me? So, I don't know. Okay, so apparently the last order they came, person they ordered from here, showed up and 
apparently Nigel and Polly were already missing. So again, it's kind of weird that um, again, it's kind of weird that we can't talk to these people. So let's call the last one. See what this one has to say. Good evening. Welcome to Dragon Inn. The best takeaway Chinese food this side of Dorchester. This is an automated service. Please hold the line while we check your number. You have a standing order with us. Would you like us to deliver your usual order? Please press the star key twice for yes or press 1 to make a new order. Your usual order is number 15. You have now ordered number 15. Sorry, but the shop is closed. We close at 11.30 p.m. You are too late. Good night. Okay, how late is it if they close at 11.30 p.m.? And when you think they would have told me that they needed an order before they, um, they were closed before I made the order, but whatever. Now I'm sure you're in a rush to look at these computers here and see what's going on, but we're actually going to look up here first, because there's some things up here. Now this is the picture from the bathroom. It was the very first thing we found here in the hotel, if you remember that. Um, now remember how I had to go peek through the little glory hole, peeping Tom hole in the bathroom in order to see that. If I had not found that hole to let me see the Larsus symbol, I could have found it here. So really, we didn't have to go into that bathroom, but we did. Now, it's not an anagram, Nigel and Polly. It's leave me alone written backwards, but whatever. And there's some pictures here from different camera angles just showing you where things may be. Uh, there's the part of the station. Newspaper article. Are they going to set up a newspaper article on this? Whatever. Um, now, this is a little quick thing about... We've actually run into most of these people, or heard it from them most of the time, but this is everyone who is known to have disappeared on the night of April 29th. Um, Thomas Callum, who was Betty Pinfold's um, boyfriend, George Crabtree, the owner, Gloria Grable. No one knows about her. She's under a false name. Matilda Fly, we were just in her room. She was the um, actress. Betty Pinfold was um, Edith's daughter. And Edith Pinfold, who is the landlady of the hotel. That's about all there is there. This is where they've got their cameras set up. You don't really need any of that. But this is important. Um, just in case, I'll remind you, you know, the password is needed. PC Terminal 2, password needed. Just in case you forget, I'll remind you that it is the only thing I like on that menu. The rest is yuck. And there's a note here from ghost watch at Haddon. So obviously Haddon Industries, and specifically someone named Henry Cuddle, seems to be interested in ghosts, and that's why he has given them all this equipment. Now, the, now you see why I skipped the computer. We're going to need a password for one of these computers. And now we know that it is the only thing he likes on that menu. Well, yes I know. Now remember, we... Um, only were able to get some information from one thing. The Carolina Pizza here with a free corn cob. <laughs> um, just thought we were weird because we hadn't talked to them. These people were upset because we didn't pay for their last order. The only one who gave us anything was Dragon Inn, and they repeated the order for number 15. Number 15 is Chicky Chow. Yum, yum. Bad cow and bitch. Okay. So now we know what the password is going to be that we're going to need. Now we won't need it right away because we're going to start on this computer. Now we can do a lot of things here. Um, we can look at Note Maker. 
and NoteMaker just talks about the things that they're doing. Basically, they're talking about how they came here to investigate the hotel. As many as 12 people are believed to have disappeared, including the landlady. Um, in 1980, someone named Edward Tully vanished here. Um, they talk about all the equipment they have um, and how both po Polly's apparently writing this, how she and Nigel have discovered things, energy orbs and things like that. Um, they talk about Mr. Crowhurst, that's Pete Crowhurst, your brother, and how, you know, some of the rooms appear to have decayed very little. I've heard of this sort of phenomena before, so apparently that's normal. And they're talking about seeing things, especially something in the ladies' toilet downstairs. I saw a door open by itself. Yes, we saw one of those too. Um, again, they're talking about how they're seeing odd shadows and things like that. This is just basically descriptions of um, the um, things they've seen. Um, the cameras have reset themselves. Um, they found something on camera 7. Um, and they're going to send to Henry Tuck Cuddle, remember their contact with Haddon. Um, but they're talking about its connections are down, they're having trouble connecting. Temperature drops are being measured. They had to switch off the radio again. Um, they've decided that the hauntings are connected to the 1947 disappearances. They don't know what's going on. They say he was slightly mad, but they put it down to losing his best friend in World War II. That's obviously Arthur Barn Arthur that they're talking about. Um, they talk about they don't like the food they've been eating. <laughs> um, now here's something weird. Um, the study appears to be locked from the inside. Time for a bit of Nancy Drew style action. I think I can get the key out. Obviously she never did that. That's the door that we stuck the piece of paper under to get the key out from. Um, but he did find George Crabtree's notes and has learned that he did know about the dark ball. You know, she hears something outside the door. They don't know what's going on. Nigel managed to open the door. I'm not sure which door she's talking about. It's probably the one we haven't come to yet. Um, anyway, they, more of the, um, It's just detail. They have a. They found something in the cellar, um, and how it got Nigel. It's outside the door. It's whispering her name. It got Pete, um, and she's going to check the doorway now. Apparently, that was when she, we heard her on the tape recorder. So, obviously, something bad happened to her there. Now here we have some sounds that he's been recording. Um, no, they won't find us unless they spy my blood. They could follow it. My own blood shall bring them to us. Shut up, Will. Keep thy mouth sealed so they can hear us. We keep quiet. We keep still. Spills. Find me some rags. I must stop the bleeding. Damn shot. Okay, that appears to have been Tom Oliver, the um, soldier who was the first disappearance here. So you can get various... As you can see, these are electronic voice phenomena type recordings. You can hear different things. Um, Yeah. 
Yeah. So again, these are electronic voice phenomena that Nigel and Polly have been recording across the hotel. Um, here we just have a set of pictures that they have been taken. These are really not too relevant. Um, beyond, you know, they give some hints to some things that we're going to find later, like the fact that there's something here in the cellar. We'll get there. And, and apparently Nigel doesn't want his picture taken for some reason. So these are less relevant than the rest of them. Um, how do I get out of this? There we go. Um, we can listen to their music. Okay, enough of that. All right. Um, here we can get some more information about the various people who disappeared in the hotel, like Thomas Callum, the lover of um, Betty Pinfold, who is staying here, George Crabtree, the guy who owns the hotel and was the one trying to find the um, Dark Fall, Mat Matilda Fly, she's the actress, we were just in her room, Gloria Grable, who's here under a false name, and has something to do with that car out there. There's Betty and Edith. And finally, I'm Andrew Varney. We really haven't done much about him yet, but he's a writer and an astronomer. Some of his books are in room 2E. Well, we're going to be there in a few minutes. But that's where that is. Um, that's just more details. Now, this is a... Actual, not much of anything. This is just... Here, giving you satellite imagery of the United Kingdom and parts of Europe. It has very little to do with this actual story going on here. Um, here we have um, their web browser. And yes, the internet did kind of look this bad back in 2002-2003. Here is a um, website for teaching you how to play the piano. Now remember we found a piece of sheet music in Betty Penfold's room that was GGABC. This is just showing you where you can play it. So if you didn't know how to play a piano, this will show you how to do that. Um, here we have a website for Ghost Hunters UK, um, which, among other things, talks about you know what energy orbs are, what poltergeist are, that sort of thing. In case you know, gives you some more details on what's going on. They talk about Polly White and Dowerton, so that's here. And you can listen to an interview with her here. I'm going to skip that for now. Um, some stuff on TV. And their sponsors are, of course, Haddon Industries. But that's basically all there is there. Now this third one, and what's interesting is when I click the third one, you notice a fourth site appeared. This one gives us mysteries of the 20th century. Now the only thing really here that's a mystery that relates to us is Matilda Fly, who, again, disappeared at the hotel. And we also have that new one that showed up is The Seeker, which lets you have you know, if you enter your birth date, it'll give you a, what your past life was. Yeah, well. So you can play with that if you want. And finally, we have some information about the what the radio vision goggles. Those are the things we just picked up and how to use them. And the electromagnetic tracker. That's the thing we've been carrying around since the beginning. That's this thing down here. Remember it? Yeah. So we have that, too. So this has just been telling us, and this is just the first monitor. Now we can look at the second monitor. Now we have to enter the password. Remember the password we looked it up is Chicky Chow. And 
I'm sure this looked like a high-tech interface back in 2002, but this just shows the various cameras they have set up and where they are. So they have a camera on the station platform, the office foyer, and sometimes when you get these, there'll be, you know, ghost phenomena over here. Let's see, there was a, there's a four flying around. The dining room. We haven't been there yet. Now there's a microphone here, but we can't hear anything at the moment anyway. That camera seems to be down. This is the room we're in right now. Okay, if this is the room I'm in right now, why can't I see myself? I mean, shouldn't I be in this picture? Or maybe I'm just out of sight over here? Hmm. Weird. And finally, this is the one in the cellar. Now, remember when we were on the third floor bathroom, I found some numbers written on the wall when we moved a mirror around? And Polly said something about that on the tape recording. These are the numbers. She said she had left them upstairs. Now, if you remember, the numbers were 20, 90, so I need to set this to 90. This one was 5, and this one was 40. And again, remember, the game doesn't remind, remember this stuff for you. You have to have written all this stuff down. Okay. What this does is this tells me that there is a cavity detected here. There is something hidden behind that. Now that's all we really need to know about this. So, um, and now I can get out of this. I'll return to main. main. Man, this is a bad user interface. All right. So that's the only thing we really needed to do here. All that other stuff we've been going through was just story. All right. We have finally finished everything we need to do in this room. Yes, I know here. So, but this gives us everything that Nigel and Polly were working on, and we, and yes, they do want to believe. All right. Let's head on down and do some more exploring. This is E. This is Andrew Varney's room. Now, we need to do some stuff in here, but we have to do things in kind of an awkward order here. There is a book here called Sites of the Northern Hemisphere by Andrew Varney. That's him. And he is also known for creating Are puzzles. Are you interested in astronomy too? He... No, I'm not. He is interested in... He is also someone who makes puzzle boxes and board games. Astronomy is only a hobby. But he has also been writing a book here. This is his journal. And in this box, we have some more scraps of paper that we can fold around. Now, the only reason we are actually in this room is because there's a telescope down the hall. And we're going to have to use that telescope in a minute but we can't find what we need to do in that telescope without having known that Varney is an astronomer. So it was kind of a, you know, we have to do this in the right order type thing. And what we have here, and I'm not going to try to get that last piece in position, this is where he is trying to solve the puzzle that we've already solved. You know that Caesar cipher where A equals Z, B equals Y, that thing we did earlier? He's trying to solve the same puzzle here, and this was a hint as to how to solve it. And there's stuff over there, but we'll get to that in a minute. Just for completeness sake, we're going to go into this room. There's actually nothing of importance in this room. I mean, you can hear a noise outside because the windows are open, but that's it. Um, over here, there is one of Nigel and Polly's cameras. And you can look at the pictures they took on it. 
including places we haven't been yet. Like, we haven't seen that or that. I don't recognize that. So, but that's all that's really in here. Then you can look at these. But, all right. All right. Now, what we're going to look at here is this telescope. Now, as we pan this around, hmm, hmm. looks familiar. That's one of the constellations. Brighter than the rest. I don't recognize it at all. All right. Um, first of all, that's Andrew Varney you're hearing. We would not have heard that if we had not looked at the book in the other room where he had, we found out he was an astronomer. Um, just, he seems confused by this particular constellation. And notice that it's kind of a diamond shape with a hook Brighter at the... Brighter than the rest. I don't recognize it at all. Kind of a diamond shape or a kite shape with that little hook off to the right. Brighter than the rest. I don't recognize it at all. Uh, we just need to remember that because it's going to become important in a few minutes. Now, while I'm down here, I'm going to do a little bit more investigating. Um, this is another bathroom, obviously. There's a couple of things in here. First of all, there's this hot, old-style hot water heater here with a piece of paper in it. It's to Miss Fly, and it basically says, with this package, our business information is at an business arrangement is at an end. Um, I do not wish to deal with you further. I hope you have not been wagging your tongue. As I was approached by a very str by the very strange owner of this hotel, he wanted me to keep something for him. So again, that was where George Crab's tree left someone another one of the little um, symbols. Uh, Gigi is Gloria Grable. You look much older in the flesh, you know. Destroy this note or else. So obviously, Gloria Grable and Matilda Fly had made a deal of some kind, and Gloria Grable gave Matilda Fly something. This is obviously why Matilda Fly thought she was um, going to be rich when she left here. The other thing we have here is this box. Now, the box is just full of soap, but if you look carefully, there's something under the lid here. And it's ha half of a piece of a photograph. Now, remember when we were in George Crabtree's room up on the third floor, we found all these, um, we found another half of this painting, and where there was the table with the little icons we could move around and the bowl of water on it. This is the other half of this the other half of that um, picture. So now we see that there is a sandstone over here and a wood over here. So this tells us the rest of what we need to do to solve that particular puzzle. And we'll get back to that in a few minutes. There's a storage room over here. I mean, you can look in it. There is literally nothing in here. There is an out-of-order jukebox. And that's pretty much all there is in this room. All right. But now that we've looked at the telescope, we can finish doing what we need to do in Andrew Varney's room here. The first thing we need to do is we need to look over here. Oops, I'm in the wrong place. Unfortunately, if you look at the wrong spot, you highlight the wrong thing. Here. Come on, it's on. There we go. Okay. There's a note here. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just remember those patterns are like that. And the main thing we need to look at is this star chart. Now remember I pointed out we had one of the constellations. Now most of these, as we moved around, he was saying that's one of the constellations, that's one of the constellations. But I looked at one that had kind of a kite shape with a hook on the end. And he was going, he didn't recognize it. 
Well, that's obviously this one. It is called Raka. Okay. Now we can look at these other things here if we want. There's other drawings and all, but that's the only one that's really important. Now we can look at this. This is another one of those um, secret messages written in that same code as before. Now, um, Andrew didn't finish solving it. We solved it earlier. I'll translate it for you. It means, guard the skin with your life. I know I sound like a madman. Edith is feeling inclined to phone the police. You must trust me. There is a great evil with us here in the hotel. My research is going well. I just need time. Your trusting friend, George Crabtree, obviously. P.S. Do not open your door this night to anyone. All right. Now, if we look underneath here, there's a book here. It is called Mapping an Alternate Sky it's by Andrew Verney, Astronomy in the Year Pre-1000. There are a list of constellations here. Now, and they all have numbers on them. Now remember, the constellation he didn't recognize, we identified as the constellation Raka, R-A-K-A. Raka is 1253476. Now you also remember he, there was a, we saw the same pattern before with his little dots under it, under that letter earlier. Um, he talks about the finding a constellation that he had never seen. And he talks about how Crabtree seems to be off his rocker. Stuffed some coded note and a piece of old skin under the door. Perhaps I should have a word with Edith. He seems odd. Um, basically, he talks about, you know, how he's going to, um, he's excited to finding a new constellation, but he's going to keep what George had given him. All right, now that's up here. Now, remember those were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and the one for Raka is 1, 2, 5, 3, 4, 7, 6. So we need to push those in that order. 1, 2, 5, 3, 4, 7, 6. And there's another symbol, which looks I'm like the sure concept. why George gave me this. It was a bag of nerves at the time. It's written on vellum, you know. Do you know what that is? It's skin. Animal skin, we can hope. Yeah. Notice that this symbol kind of looks like the constellation. So obviously what we are dealing with here is another one of the symbols in the lyrics. That is Raka. So add that to your collection. And we are now done with the second floor. I realized that this was a lot of exposition and talking and discussion and but we've only got one more floor to go than the basement and the thing hidden under the basements yes it's a very much story based but this has been going on for well over 40 minutes now going on quite a bit and we're going to call a stop here so i am dennis i am the paleo gamer and i will see you next time as we continue our explorations of the station hotel in darkfall I will see you then.